Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS with Java. In this video, we're going to talk about testing. Because when you start building serverless applications, the way that you test them can become a little bit different than what you're used to with your typical on-premise application. And that's because typically serverless applications are made up of lots of loosely coupled small pieces of functionality. So being able to spin your entire application up locally and test it isn't quite as easy as it once was. So in this video, we're gonna have a look at unit testing and how you can unit test your Lambda functions. When we think about testing in serverless applications, the typical mantra is to unit test locally, test everything else in the cloud. So that's your integration tests, your end-to-end -end tests, smoke tests, load tests, do all that against actual resources deployed into AWS. But then how do you debug locally? How do you test locally? How do you do that? That's what we're gonna have a look at today. But here we are in IntelliJ now, and let's have a look at the sample Lambda function we've got to run our tests against. So if I open up my handler here, and we've got a single purpose handler function here that's gonna be used to receive a request from API Gateway. That request is going to be to create a product, and then it's gonna store that product in DynamoDB. And if we just have a look at the actual function itself for a minute, you see we've got the API Gateway request coming in, then we read the body of the request and we map that to a product object. And then we use this data access client here to store that in DynamoDB. And then of course we return a response. And then we've got all of this error handling going on as well, just in case things go wrong. If we have a look at this data access um, functionality now, this is just a interface for the minute. So if I go into my data access folder, we've just got a simple interface that allows us to store a product. And if we have a look at our product object, this is a pretty um, straightforward Java class. We have a product ID, we've got name, description, we've got a constructor, and then we've got various methods to get and set pieces of data. The other thing you'll notice is that we've got some um, attributes here around DynamoDB. I'm not gonna dive into DynamoDB in this video. I will put some links into the description about what this DynamoDB functionality is, because it makes it really easy to use Dynamo with your serverless applications. And then of course, we've got an actual implementation of our data access client that actually interacts with DynamoDB to actually store the product in the database. Again, this isn't a video on DynamoDB. Dynamo is just a really easy persistent store to use when you're testing things out with Lambda. So if we come back to our function code now, you look, you see we've got two constructors at the top here. Now, the Lambda service always requires a parameterless constructor. That is what Lambda will use to actually initialize your function. And you see we've got that there. We've got this create product function that doesn't actually take any parameters. And then all that is doing is actually making a call off to our other constructor passing in null. And what this other constructor is doing is checking if the the value passed in is null, and if it is, it's gonna create an instance of our DynamoDB data access client. If it isn't null, however, it's that passed in value that we're actually going to use in our application. And then this will become important in a second when we actually look at our unit tests. So our Lambda function code doesn't actually need to know or care about what is actually doing the data access logic. You see, we've just got this store product method that's just being called. So when an actual request comes into this function when it's actually running in Lambda, the actual DynamoDB data access client will be used. How does this benefit us from a testing perspective? Well, let's go and have a quick look at our unit tests and we'll have a look at that. So if I open up my tests here, I've got this create product function unit tests. 
And there's a few different libraries we're actually using here, a few different packages. We've got um, JUnit to actually perform the tests. And then we're using the Makito package to allow us to easily mock some of these interfaces and API calls. Because remember, a unit test should have no external dependencies. A unit test should be able to run without any interaction with APIs or databases or anything like that. It should be self-contained on its own. And Makito really easy allows us to mock some of these um, external dependencies. Now let's have a look at our actual unit test now. So before each execution, a test execution, we're going to create a new create product function, an instance of our actual function. And you see we're using that constructor and we're passing in a data access client. In this case, we've got a data access client locally to the unit test, but you see we've got this mock attribute. This is telling Makito to mock out this interface. So that object will actually be real, it won't be null, and that can then be used in our application. If we actually have a look at this first test now, there's a couple of things going on here. So we're using a feature of JUnit that I actually really like compared to some of the .NET testing frameworks, and that's the parameterized test attribute. And then we can pass in this actual event attribute, and this event attribute comes from a Lambda runtime tests package. And these both together allow us to read a JSON file from the file system, deserialize that to an actual Java object, and then pass that Java object into our test as a parameter. So you see our test here is just taking in an API gateway proxy request event. And the combination of these two attributes here are then what is allowing us just to pass that strongly, strongly typed object straight into our test. And if we just have a quick look at the file system again in my resources folder, I've got this um, JSON object. Let's scroll that over a little bit. And this is just a representation of what API gateway passes to, to Lambda. The important bit being at the top here is we've actually got our string representation of our JSON body that's going to come into our API. Back to our unit test. So what we are doing here is we're first going to create a new random identifier. So this store product method actually returns what would be in the real world, the new ID of the product, which is just a randomly generated GUID. So we're going to create a GUID, the first thing in the test, and then we're going to tell Makito that when the store product method is called with any product object, then return UUID. So remember, when we've initialized our function up here, we're telling it to use that test data access client. And then within this individual test, we're configuring the behavior of that mock. And then if we look down here, we're just passing the calling the handle request method. If we go back to our function, that is what the actual methods called on the function. We're calling that handle request method. And then we just get back our API gateway proxy response. Now this argument capture class is actually another really useful feature that comes from Makito. And what the argument capture allows us to do is to capture the input that was passed to a method. So our store product method takes a product object as one of the parameters. With this argument capture, we can actually capture the exact product object that was passed into that method as part of the mock invocation. So I create a new argument capture for my product class. And you see when I'm ver using the Makito verify method to verify what was called, I'm passing in this product argument capture, which will then allow me to get access to the actual product object that was passed into my method. Now, why is this useful, you might be thinking? Well, this test here is actually testing the DC realization of the payload that comes from API Gateway. So of course, our business logic is just taking that payload and DC realizing that into an object and then passing that into the method. So we want to check that the object that gets passed into the method to store actually matches the payload that came in from API Gateway. So that's what we're doing here as part of our assertions in this test. We're just making sure that the 
values of the actual products or the name, the description and the price match the values that were actually passed in as part of our payload up at the top here. So we've got all them values there. And that's what we're doing in this first test. And you see, we've now, we can now run these tests without needing to worry about DynamoDB or API calls or even having an internet connection. These tests can be run completely independently on their own and allow us to really easily test our business logic. And we've got a few other tests here. So one is that we're testing the response that comes back. So we're expecting the API response to simply include the created product ID. So that's what we're testing here. We're then testing what happens if a bad request gets sent in, in this case, an empty body. And then of course, we're testing if there's actually an error in DynamoDB. So what we can do with, with Makito is we can say when the store product method is called, then throw a DynamoDB exception. And now we can test what happens if DynamoDB is offline. And we can do all of this, again, without needing any external dependencies as far as APIs go. Now, I did also say I will talk about local debugging. And we can actually use these unit tests as a mechanism for doing some local debugging. So if I take this first example here, this where we're testing the event DC realization, I come into my create product function and I'm actually gonna pop a breakpoint just at the start of the method there. I can actually come into my unit test and I can hit that button there and actually debug my unit test. This is just compiling my application now it's starting up the test. You see my tests are running. Excellent. This is all looking good. And then I will actually hit my breakpoint. Perfect. And then I can actually step through my application code, my Lambda function code, as if I'm running it locally without needing to worry about permissions or credentials. And this is a really easy way to test your business logic locally. And then when it comes to integration testing, then you want to do that in the cloud against actual cloud resources. And we're gonna cover that next time, I promise. Now, one final thing I just wanted to talk about, and this is another really great feature that I really like with Java, is that if I actually come over to my terminal now, and I actually want to deploy this application, so I'm using AWS SAM. If you're not familiar with AWS SAM, I'll put a link in the description to my previous video. But when I run a SAM build command, of course, as part of the Maven build process, my tests will be run automatically without me doing anything. So I know that every time I run a SAM build for this application, that it's been tested, at least unit tested in this case. So the deployable artifact that I get off the back of this SAM build command, I have some confidence in. Without me doing anything, the tests are just there and ready to run. If I was to come back into my application now, and let's just break one of these tests. So let's change that name there to be this. This is a broken unit test. Flip back over again, and I'm gonna run my SAM build command again. You can see that first one completed successfully because all my tests passed. But now Maven's gonna try and compile this application, and then it's going to go, ah, no, the unit tests have not passed. What are we gonna do now? And this gives really easy confidence if you're using AWS SAM to build and deploy your application because you get these tests running as part of your build process. So that's unit testing. Remember the key takeaways, unit test your business logic locally. When it comes to testing in a more robust manner, do that in the cloud with actual cloud resources. That's all for this video. As always, if you've got any feedback, any comments, please reach out and let me know. If you like the video, then please subscribe, please like, there should be a little button up here somewhere, I think. I will see you next time.